My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast. I'm not going to give it a fancy title. Hey, Chris, how you going? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. I think we had to get in there sooner or later because, like, I, I, I barely think this is going to be about baking. Yeah, like the, like the 600 tweets, uh, the 30 emails. I think you've got something to say, so, you know. Insta. Did you get the pictures or did that go straight to junk mail? Um, <laughs> they're framed on the wall and I'm they're saving lovely. saving them for later. Yeah, my ones are on the wall. Um, so... <laughs> All my junk mail goes into the junk mail anyway, like junk photos, photos of my junk. I bought, I bought those little lights that you put on the bottom of some frames in like art galleries and so you, you're, 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 you're very well lit from below, which I hear is how you are normally, so. Yeah, looks like the awful tower. <laughs> I've been crushed, crushed to the ground. <laughs> so how the devil are you doing after last night's extravaganza? Oh, you know, I've just climbed out of the fetal position for the podcast. Oh, dear. I did, I did like you looking, you know, reflectively at the oven. Um, the, the, the beautiful sounds of silence playing in the background. It was... The most depressing promo you're ever going to see of me, and it's while I'm watching me win a technical. <laughs> <laughs> it was very obtuse, you know, like it was a bit of an oxymoron in it terms was... of... It must have been an interesting night for you in that regard too because you, you, you're kicking the shit out of the technical and, like, crushing it yeah. and watching it going, I know how this ends. <laughs> yeah. Why am I so depressed? <laughs> you know, it's like those marathon runners you see on those Facebook clips where they're, like, you know, going along and then they get all cocky towards the end of the run <laughs> and then some bastard just comes flying up from behind. And takes first. Stops to wave at the crowd. Yeah. Someone goes charging past. <laughs> If I was in the marathon, I'd be that dude that shit his pants and he's just like running it down with his ankles. <laughs> See, if I was, I'd, I'd be the, the John Belushi from the Saturday Night Live sketch where his, his marathon training secret is little donuts. I went to a, <laughs> <laughs> I went to a marathon once. And Did you watch? No, I had to pick up the piss bottles because that's what we were there for. No, that's right. We weren't supposed to touch the piss bottles. We're picking up the clothes that are thrown away. Hang on a minute. So <laughs> did you or did you not pick up piss bottles? <laughs> this is a baking yeah. podcast, by the way, people. I'm just okay. pointing it out there. No, because I was a bit. I had no fucking idea what they were. I just presumed that it was rubbish, and I was a girl guy. Juice. And I'm like, you fuckers, this is dirty. You should put them in the bin. And so I pick them up, and then like the regional leaders run over, like, no. And I'm like, what? She's like, it's not Gatorade. <laughs> it's verjuice. <laughs> It's bottles of verjuice. Homemade verjuice. Homemade verjuice. There you go. Well, apparently it is a really good lubricant. Oh, is that? Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> I don't want to know how he knows that because I can only think of it one expert in... Anyway, moving, moving on. Moving on. Because I can only think of... I can only, yeah, I can after one last expert. night's wedding cakes. <laughs> after last night's wedding cakes. So, oh, I should have put verjuice in it. That would, have, that would have got you over the line. Verjuice and peppermint. What a mix. I, yeah, so so they said you went heavy-handed with the with the peppermint. Now my response to that is, have they not watched you bake? Have they not seen like the fact that everything you've made was jumbo, and everything yeah. was an extra? So surely they anticipated, you know, peppermint was going to punch me in the face. Well, it's just really out of character to go big and heavy-handed on something. So, and and the, the week that you went like sort of smaller and dainty, they complained. Oh. Dainty crate cake. Yes. <laughs> what is this? This is tiny, and you're like, what? You told me size didn't matter. <laughs> well, she's not the first female to say it to me, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not what she said. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not what she said. <laughs> Definitely not what she said. So, overall, the, the the general standard. We've talked about it a lot this this series. We'll get slightly serious before we get back to being a bit warped and normal. Mm, um, it's like Snoop Dogg, high as fuck. Yeah, exactly. The standard That's is the standard. high as fuck. Um, what is it like to be... Oh, I thought it was more like, uh, get low. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to be in that sort of baking environment where there's just everyone's on it all the time? It was a pretty crazy environment to be in to have such good people around you. And it was actually pretty crazy to be in that top four and to see the people that had already left the shed prior to me yeah. But I thought in the early weeks going, there's no way I'm getting getting past these guys. But it was just a place where you could grow because everyone knew something different. Everyone was really good. Everyone had their own specialty. So it was just, yeah, everyone went away learning something new. 
So what were the two, like two of like the gold nuggets, so to speak, that you learnt from people around you? Um, two gold nuggets. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be. Like, I, I don't look at me. I'm looking as confused as everybody. No, it's like those things. I don't. I can't remember some like key takeaways or those. Key yeah. takeaways. That's the. No, I like key takeaways. Well, Dave had a key takeaway last night. He wears joggers so he can get everywhere faster. <laughs> there you go. There's one. Yeah. So that, that was definitely something to remember. So anyone, anyone in the audition process right now, uh, get your joggers, get a good set. Mm. Start, start jogging from the oven to the bench. Quick turns, quick turns. Active wear. <laughs> active, active wear. In the shed. in the shed in my active wear. <laughs> Suddenly, you're in the shed, in suddenly, you've, suddenly you've got bakers being sponsored by Nike and Adidas. <laughs> oh, imagine when they start wearing the sweatbands. Oh, wait. <laughs> we already had Robert start that trend. I oh, know. How good would that be if he wore a uh, Roger Federer Nike headband? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I wanted a Pat Cash. I wanted like a 1980s checkerboard Pat Cash. Oh, that would have been brilliant. I wanted a Daniel son. <laughs> so Daniel know. Russo. So Sitting was, there, yeah. And Dave could have been a young Mr Miyagi. Who was who was the leader of Cobra Kai? Maggie. Oh, oh. What was his, he was the good guy. Nah, sweep the leg, sweep the leg. Who would? Oh, well, sweeping the leg. Oh, that's totally like Emma, isn't it? <laughs> so it's and Emma suddenly sweeps Emma, the leg. Emma and Marcus in a dental kind of like <laughs> conspiracy. Um. There's no one. That would have been, been fascinating. I, actually, I could see Emma doing that. Because she'd be <laughs> logical about it. She'd be there going, why are you standing up on one leg like that? Just sweep the other one. Just yeah, take the other one out. Yeah, it's pure physics and biology. Look, I'll draw your diagram. Look, gravity. Um, that that would have worked my, out quite well. My science tells me you can't walk with one leg. And far <laughs> more importantly about Emma, and we'll come back to the golden nuggets in a minute, because far more importantly when it comes to Emma, Mm. Believe you were you were trying to sort of hold yourself back from her gangster influences. Now, <laughs> as an oh. as an impressionable youth in that shed, how did mm. you manage to resist Emma's you know gangster lean, so to speak? Well, she did pretty well because she was in the witness protection program. You did great. She, wow. she really didn't introduce a lot of a gangster. There wasn't a lot of manners in there. It was just she was trying to keep to herself, keep quiet. So it was, it was quite easy to stay away from that. The subliner. She refrained from, you know, like putting horses' heads in people's ovens and, you know, threatening you with a concrete, what's it called, concrete shoes. Yeah. That, that was back at the apartments. <laughs> um, that was off camera. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't her though. Like, it was when we got back on the bus, you'd, you'd get to your apartment and there'd be half an animal in there waiting for you. <laughs> Isn't that when people walked into your apartment? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got half an animal for you. I do mean a half naked animal. It's <laughs> <laughs> only because I had my shirt off. Any, any port in a storm. Yeah. So I I think that <laughs> I yeah, I, I I think that it's it's it was an interesting blend of bakers and not one that you sort of would have necessarily picked to sort of gel as quickly as you all did. Um did it gel that fast? No, oh, we, we gelled pretty much overnight. That's pretty fast. I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> we um, like we use too much gelatin. Um, <laughs> Is that we gear? gel very quick, but then you know, it was a bit thick for a while. There was no give in this relationship. It was all take, no give. Oh, all take. <laughs> oh, so it's the key, key to a successful relationship. All take. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you if you give too much, then they expect it. Exactly. So if it's, all, if it's all taken said, you know, no one notices. Exactly. Because <laughs> no one's paying attention to what was given in the first place. It's, it's beautiful. Look at this. This is relationship counselling to live by. I know. You're going to take over from, like, you're gonna, you and Claudia are going to set up your own practice, baking and psychology. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't live around that. <laughs> not, with that no, no, not with that attitude, you couldn't. So... <laughs> So was there a particular bake that just really annoyed the hell out of you and you never wanted to see again as long as you live? No, I loved them all. <laughs> loved them all? Uh, look, it wasn't necessarily something that you screwed up or anything. It was, uh, 
crepe cakes can go suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm with you. Um, They're just the most pointless thing. It's like not a pancake. It's thin. It's disappointing for all concerned, really. It's like 800 layers of just bleh. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, I, I do agree with you. The crepe cake's sort of disappointing because if you like crepes, you don't necessarily want to stack like that no, where you can't fold them. One or two. So that doesn't work. If you like a cake, you're going, this is just disappointing. Yeah, a crepe cake doesn't serve any purpose. You're right. And once you cut it, surely it just, like, trundles out into slithers. The emperor has no clothes. <laughs> Chris is saying it right now. The emperor has no clothes. <laughs> the crepe cake is a lie. Well, what's something new that you've tried that you're like, yeah, bitch, this is my jam? Um, jam? I knew that was coming. The second you said, yeah, bitch, this is my jam, yeah. I'm thinking, you're about to say jam drops. Um, <laughs> just jam. So what, oh, totally jam drops. So what the fuck was up with the jam drops? I have to ask that question because we've made note of it. Everyone seems to think that the jam drops were, like, the worst technical in the world. No, it was good. I come third. I know you came third. You had a good week. But what is it about... Jam drops that you think made people go, This is a I, bit. I come so yeah, this, what, what do you think it was about the jam drops though that made people go, This shit? Everyone thought it was a piece of piss. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it did. Everyone look... approached it going, Jam drops. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out harder than you expect. And then the jam drops went <laughs> 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 straight back at them. Yeah, it's a, it's a it was a weird one because for me, like you just said, then it was like it was a with technicals. Normally, when people fuck up the technical, it's because they've never heard of it before, or mm. there's something ultra tricky technique wise. Yeah, that one seemed to trip people over. As you said, it was the opposite. Everyone's went jam drops. They're four bucks at Woolies. I can do this. <laughs> Woolies can make them. If, if Woolies can make them for four dollars a pop, I can make a jam drop. Yeah, and all the Woolies bake yeah. okay. not so. Easy, is it? They're not just like randos. There's a reason we're fresh food people. <laughs> it's because we pay a lot of money for that. Exactly. We pay people to bust these in, damn it. Because <laughs> we're clever. We're not making this shit. You're kidding me. The jam drop, it'll eat you alive. <laughs> it's got like the five hatted chefs. I think to make jam drops so all these because they're so complex. Was that, a week, was that a week where Matt Moran walked in and just went, I'm never touch. I wouldn't touch this. This is too difficult. <laughs> yeah, you just went screw that. Like, can't believe I've set you such a difficult one. <laughs> You'll never see. Yeah, it. I, tried, I tried to make these and I couldn't. Maggie actually had to make this batch. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie made this batch, and Maggie goes, "I had a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> we had nine, ten people working on it. <laughs> That's why it had figs in it." Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the amount of dried fruit that's been in this series. Yes, oh, the okay. bowels are probably moving like. Yeah, I don't necessarily the ocean know if that's. The ocean. I don't actually know if that's something I'm happy with. The idea that their bowels are moving like the motion of the ocean. Not easy. <laughs> be a bit There's only one occurrence of that, and that was after we ate the keto burrito. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about this because we've referenced this a few times. Because most people obviously won't have seen the photo. When you were all out and about. You all went off to a well-known Mexican establishment. I'm not going to name them because they don't sponsor us. And if they want me to tell them where they're from, they're going to give us some money. But they do the kilo burrito for the luchador masks. Yeah. Now, how many of you attempted it? Who was it? I believe... I think three of us, four or four of us had it. I think. It was you, me, Rob. Rob. Me, Rob, Bob, Claude. Yep. Now... I think um, Jess opted for a... Not a kilo. <laughs> no, like a fajita or some shit. Why would you... When there is when there is a luchador mask on offer, you take the luchador mask. <laughs> no, she just wanted 10,000 chicken pajitas. <laughs> 10,000 chicken pajitas. <laughs> 10,000 chicken pajitas. So Ooh. it was... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's quite impressive the fact that you all managed to get the Luchador mask. Um, it was a feat, and I think it's possibly even more impressive than anything any of you did in the shed. <laughs> As a life skill, I appreciated it a hell of a lot more than some of the baking. Um, yeah, it's like, cool, you can bake a cake, wow. Yeah, but can you put a cake worth of burrito inside you 
and then wear a luchador mask out of the restaurant like a hero. <laughs> well, the key was trying to eat like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that man eats like a pig. <laughs> no, he eats, he eats like a duck. Pigs tend to chew their food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, so, we're, so, we're so getting sued by Matt Groening and Kat. <laughs> anyway. Um, we're, we're, re, we're pretty much right in season 38 for him right now. Well, look, someone needs to. Um, <laughs> someone needs to. Let's talk Simpsons because... Essentially, we're, we're a vocal Simpsons shit post. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. We are at this point in time. We are a vocal Simpsons shit post. You're right. So, Aurora Borealis. <laughs> at this time of year, at this, how this good time. would that have been if someone's oven caught on fire in the shed? Oh. And they said, "What's going on there?" And you get Aurora Borealis. <laughs> See, and I know, this time of year. and I know that you would have done that because you know some people, some some eagle-eyed <laughs> viewers have picked it up. Somebody has the stone cutter's tattoo. Hey, I had to carry the stone of triumph. <laughs> that was was that before or after the stone of shame? I had, they they strapped me to the stone of shame because I was just auditioning for the Bake Off. Yeah, <laughs> like, stone of shame, mate. And then when they stripped me down, they noticed that it was behind my ear. Yeah, and so then Maggie B herself dragged over the stone of triumph. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Maggie B. And then everyone everyone followed me. <laughs> Maggie B, big fan of the Stone of Triumph. A little alien came out to serve some alien. We do, we do. Good luck to anyone trying to listen along to us, by the way, because I'm not even listening along to us at the moment. Um, Who rigs every Bake Off show? We do. <laughs> We don't do a very good job because we bail out the only stone cutter at the semi final. <laughs> yeah. It's because it's because you were required elsewhere. Like your talents were needed elsewhere. Yeah, alien in, <laughs> alien negotiations. So in 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 all sort of honesty there, um, how much do the Simpsons help when you get into like really stressful situations like in the shed? Uh, look, the Simpsons are pretty much from a second language. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm the same. <laughs> but Stressful situation, I didn't, oh, well, I, I didn't like to stress, so I didn't stress. I just chose to take the, oh, well, approach. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very uh, well-researched and thoroughly scientifically backed approach, that. And obviously That's he was a great approach. It's like when Matt Moran goes, are you happy with how that looks? And you know he's setting up for you to go, oh, fuck. <laughs> but if you're like, are you happy with how that looks? And I'm like, yeah. Sure. Yeah, why? Got something to say, Moran? And he just, just sort of looks at it and goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> you are delusional, mate. Yeah. Are you happy with how that looks? I'm just going to make it four times as large. So yeah. that's my plan. If you don't like it, I'm just going to make it four times larger. And that, that, that's what we're going to do, Matt. Are you happy with how that looks? What? It's got eyes? <laughs> Because just a random question, because like you make big bakes, like if you could make one of those like big like tourist attractions in Australia, what would your be? okay something that's not a body part? Um, what would be? Well, it's already it's already been made, and it's in Newcastle, and it's called the Big Penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And it really is. And the sad thing is, is that our councillors have decided that in six months' time they're going to knock it down. Oh. I like the fact it's because, taken months to knock down a big penis. Oh, look, it's like an observation tower yeah. on, the, uh, on, the, on the wall that what no one uses. What, you're not going to make the wreck off Stockton? You, <laughs> you've got to scale the shaft <laughs> to look at the only hole, the only window in the knob. I think I, am, I have never been more disappointed that they didn't make one of these regional bake things like last year. <laughs> look, look oh. we got the fucking tower in Perth. <laughs> the bell tower. We got the bell tower in Perth. And hey, James, if you happen to be listening to this, but no one knew what the fuck the bell tower was. Matt Moran still doesn't know what the bell tower is. And and you, on the other hand, would have had the chance to make a giant Newcastle penis. And well, look, after I made me trifle, I actually had a few messages on Twitter from some new Novocastrians. <laughs> um, <laughs> Saying it's great to see that Chris has represented Newcastle and uh, made the giant penis. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's it, it's a proud 
place you come from when everyone's proud of their big dick. <laughs> well, that's hilarious because we just named it the Big Penis. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just a casual name for it. It's, it's supposed to be called something else. I'm sure it's got a name. But that's, <laughs> the Cocking and, from Memorial? The Cocking <laughs> But that is the only reason they're getting rid of it too is because we all refer to it as the giant penis. <laughs> Start referring it to as the Cockingworth and see how they go. They're just like, oh, my God, we can't be associated with a giant penis. <laughs> it's like, sure, let's be associated with a small one and see how much people love us then. Yeah, I mean, hey, it worked for MasterChef. Remember they went to Japan and on the building opposite the Golden Turd? The Golden Turd? You know, I mean, I mean, I think these sort of artefacts seem to seem to take people's fancy. Um, <laughs> so lots of people seem enamoured with, with the giant penis in Newcastle. And, you know, only human. But is that already the giant clam, otherwise? <laughs> yeah, you can't really put the giant clam and the giant penis together, otherwise you, you might have little giant clams and penises all over the place. See, what could have happened then is that Alex could have gone and served his macarons at the giant clam. <laughs> like, are they- See, it's the perfect opportunity to lick the jam out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Only once a month, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Can't, you could do it every night for seven nights in a row. <laughs> Welcome to the first ever R-rated episode of the Washing Up Podcast. So, period. Talking about jam and, and macarons, what are you thinking? Exactly. Kevin? And 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 you know what I'm I'm fearing? I'm fearing that March is going to fit in here somewhere, and that's why it's R-rated. Ah, so oh, Lord. Like, oh, it's is, isn't that the song? What is it? The um, is it the sweetest thing? Yeah. When it's easy and it's green? Yeah, <laughs> if it's easy and it's green. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, it, it, that's matcha. It's matcha, yeah. Um, matcha, matcha, should it be banned from kitchens and why? <laughs> should it be banned from kitchens, yes. Yeah, notice how it was why, not why not. It was just why. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just powdered mould, isn't it? It's just mould spores. I've, I've always thought it's, you know what I've always believed matcha to be? I've always believed matcha to be, you know, those like green sponges that you sometimes find in the bottom of f- fake plants to hold them up? Oh, the, um, the <laughs> forest foam. Yeah, the forest foam. The forest foam. <laughs> <laughs> I think that matcha is ground up forest foam. Look, it tastes like it. <laughs> it's the only thing I can think of. Mm. Um, it, it's the only thing I can think of. Now... To make it semi-serious, and I know I keep dragging it, kicking and screaming back to semi-serious stuff, but there was a moment last night, um, we talked about it on the pod, we talked about it on our podcast, we'll, we'll, uh, on our review podcast, we'll talk about it here. Um, there was a moment where you ran over with Claudia and helped out Barb. Um, now, on one hand, strategically, possibly not the best move in the world, but... I think it goes to show again the the camaraderie in the tent and especially that close sort of friendship that you and Barb sort of have. So was there a moment's pause where you thought to yourself, you know, it's the semi, do I help? Or was it just, yeah, we're helping? I was actually trying really hard to push it over, but Claudia kept stopping me. Claudia, kept, <laughs> Claudia just kept on checking it and dragging it back? She's like, no, you can't do that. It's not nice. Don't you hate it when someone's taking the Hippocratic Oath and has to actually, like, sort of abide by it and therefore... <laughs> Do no harm. Oh, fuck off. What is your harm? Let me harm. <laughs> yeah. Let me harm myself or people. I don't care. It's not my fault if, if it hits the floor. <laughs> Grab it. Yeah. It's not my fault it wasn't guarded properly. <laughs> Good support. At no point did you run in and, like, fly kick it either, which I thought was impressive. Um. <laughs> hey, look, if, if I could run in and fly kick over the top of one of them benches... <laughs> you wouldn't have been in Bake Off? You could have tossed it in the air and go, oh, sorry, Bob, I thought you were doing the floating cake. And it <laughs> I would have gone the other way and gone to uh, the Australian Ninja Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it, was, it was one of those moments, and a lot of people on social media have sort of commented about the fact that everyone went over and helped out. Um, again, it's sort of because it's, 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 it's that sort of show. Um, and I don't think, and the thing is, I don't think that anyone in that shed probably would have you know, sat there and let somebody not put something up in the semi final. Oh, as tempting as it is, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I think in that position as well, if it was rolls, if it was reversed, and you were in Barb's position, there'd be no 
hesitation on her behalf to turn around and give you a hand as well. So, And, I mean, the other benefit with that too is that you can then hold it over the other person for life. <laughs> so what have you milked from Barb since <laughs> <laughs> assisting her um, in the final? So that's, what have I milked of Barb's? Oh. <laughs> I knew again. I knew where this was going. Oh, you just you're walking oh, into no, his no. traps. I'm just opening. Control it. <laughs> Games for experienced players. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a, a point during the show, during the filming, where Matt had to uh, pull oh. Maggie aside and say, "Maggie, he's being dirty." <laughs> Yeah, you guys seem to be, by the end of it, I, I'm, I'm crediting you, I don't know if it's right or not, but I'm crediting you and Barb in particular with being the negative influence that meant that Dave suddenly showed negative. sass. Negative? Yeah. Negative? It was a beautiful improvement. I think it showed personal growth. But I don't know how it's going with the programming. So, <laughs> were you responsible for the sudden sass that Dave produced? No. Dave, Dave just grew that. Naturally. With his uh, florist foam matcher. <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens when you're around matcha too much. You build the sass. <laughs> you guts to sass it. <laughs> Quit talking that jab, Turkey. You guts to sass it. <laughs> yeah, no, look, you don't really have a choice when you're around it 24 7, do you? No, you kind of either got to run with it or you're going to get left behind or crushed. Yeah. And, and you run. Picked it up via osmosis, I reckon. How good is the movie Osmosis Jones? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is pretty bloody good, by the way. Surprisingly. No never way. seen it. You've never seen it? No. Nah. What? Well, we're actually, this was, you answered a question today, actually, Christy. There was a the question yeah. about what's the classic movie that you've never seen? Godfather. One, two, or three. What? Yeah, I didn't know this either. I, hey, hey, I have done some jobs right. I have introduced her to Die Hard. Yeah, that was oh, great. what? And did introduce, did introduce her to the fact that it is a Christmas movie. Yes, it is. It is? It have you introduced movie. her to the Die Hard song? No, no what? No, I haven't. Oh. But to be, to, be, to be fair, I mean, look, I, I, whenever I think Die Hard and I think song, I then think Bruce Willis singing, I go Hudson Hawk. Hey, it's... It, and then you think Bruce Willis singing, then you think another ball guy singing, and then you think Australian ball guy singing... And then you think Gary Sweet singing, most people are no, singing on crazy. crazy. While abseiling in the side of the Triple M Sydney building. Ah. <laughs> they did that. That was a real thing. Um, I didn't imagine that. Gary Sweet abseiled in Triple M singing, most people I know think that I'm crazy. And the answer is yes, Gary. Yes, they do. They really, really do. Yes, most people do think you're crazy. Not as cool as Gina Jeffries singing the whole creep. Yeah, Jenny Jeffries and Creep was interesting. But the difference was that that was a musical challenge, whereas Gary Sweet was releasing that as a single. Ah, oh, fuck hey, that shit. You, know, you, you should be pleased you missed that shit. Oh, man. He had an all-star band. What? Yeah. Who was what, in his band? Well, mostly the cast of Police Rescue. Fuck off. But no, they, they, they released, weren't playing it. Did they get any from, like, you know, like... Steve Bastoni was pretending to play saxophone. Oh, did Lisa McCune show up? Just no, she was Blue Heelers, folks, and she was. I don't not, know. They're all fucking police they're shows. They're all cop shows, you know. With white people in them. Lots of white people in, in cop shows. Yeah. Lots of white people in cop shows. White cops. <laughs> <laughs> white there you go. Cops, there's, white, there's, cops. <laughs> white cops, white cops. Better run away. <laughs> Better yeah. run away because it's not your day. Anyway, um... Now we've, re we've recast most of the police shows in Australia. That's, yeah. probably, that's probably a pretty good moment. Mm. Um, speaking of bald gentlemen, Matt Moran. Yes. Now, obviously you are responsible for his pattern baldness, given that last night they said that the judges pulled their hair out while judging. Yeah. So how does it feel to know that you are responsible for Matt Moran being bald? Because he had a luxurious oh. hair beforehand. It was, it was just ridiculous. Like The camera angles that they picked up during the season to make him look bald the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's called backward mapping. They've gone back and gone quick, make him look like he had no hair. We all know that Richard Wilkins based his hair on Matt Moran's hair. Oh, that's all the same. Exactly. They go the same barber and all. Oh, <laughs> did. Used to. Chris came along and fucked that up. And now, now Matt Moran doesn't need the barber. <laughs> and he, you know, gives me the money that he saves on his haircuts. <laughs> 
what so you're, you're loaded is what you're telling us. Uh, <laughs> no, apparently he used to get his haircuts done at home, didn't pay for them. <laughs> Just cuts. Uh, <laughs> I'll have the children's special, but you're an adult. Yeah. I know what I said. I just imagine him going back to his farm once a month, you know, to check on the lamb and also to get his hair cut. <laughs> Moran lamb checks, <laughs> followed by haircuts. Yeah. The bowl cut, the Moran bowl cut. <laughs> while, they're, while they're shearing the sheep, he just pops in there. <laughs> He just jumps in line, shuffles forward with the rest of them and pretends that no one's noticed. Matt Moran is moving with the shit. <laughs> click, go oh, the shears, boys. Click, click, click. Ah, oh, he's lost an ear. <laughs> oh, dear. Did you ever notice he only had one ear? No, I was with his hair angle. I couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, he just... Brushes his hair over it, you just never tell. Come over, come over with it. It's really going to hurt him in the future, I find. You know, I wonder how people are going to cope with the fact there's a one eared ball, Matt Moran, when we're so used to his luxurious locks. I know. He's going to be unrecognizable on MasterChef. He's going to walk in, you know, when they do the whole. He's going to look um, like he belongs on Police 10 7 as a criminal. Yeah. He's going to walk in, you know, on like the Tuesday nights where they do like the immunity pin, and no one's going to know who he is. They're going to treat him like they do all the unknown chefs. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Moran. So, what do you do for a living, Matt? What's your. <laughs> He's not going to recognise you with this guy. I used to be Australia's most recognisable chef, and then a giant guy called Chris with a mohawk got to me. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's true. Like, I'd like to not take credit for it, but... It is true. You are responsible. Um, you just got to own it. And it's a burden that you bear quite well, I find. You're going to be the target of Aussie patriots everywhere. Well, I'll just, I'll just let me hair down. <laughs> no one will know who you are. No. They so, won't even know who I am. So when, so when, so when we called for nominees for the Virgies, um, which are happening later on this week, when we called for nominees for the Virgies, you automatically put forward the nomination for best baker with a mohawk. <laughs> um, best bearded baker with a mohawk. How does it feel to know that you are probably going to lose that category too, Matt Moran? Yeah. Look. <laughs> The student has the teacher become a student. <laughs> Is that the best way to put it? I um, introduced him to the Mohawk, and well, he introduced me to wow. losing. To love <laughs> is what he introduced you to. He um, did. There's a nice screen capture of the last episode where he's just about to. It's a romantic uh, moment, I and mean, it's probably the. Mo well, I'm going to go out on a limb. The most romantic moment in Bake Off history. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful screenshot. Uh, we'll put it out there on Twitter. You boys call it romantic and I've got it tucked away on my bedside table. <laughs> what, what she's actually done out there is she's gone out and picked up a digital photo frame. <laughs> and she's just got that image in the digital photo frame and just keeps on, like, hitting the button so it moves around for her. It's... <laughs> it depends on which button I hit, though. <laughs> on what moves around. Forward, reverse. Forward, reverse. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just don't hit your magic button. <laughs> uh, I hope that everyone at home works out that this, this is probably the best representation we could put forward of Chris because it's the most appropriate because, you know, yes, there is a very, 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 very talented baker there, but there's also someone who doesn't take himself seriously, which is one of the reasons why I think everyone on social media warmed so quickly. Um, You've pretty much had, well, from what I've seen, almost exclusively positive feedback. Um, how has the feedback been? Oh, it's been, well, since last night, it's been pretty amazing. Um, good to know that there's quite a lot of people out there that, that like me. Um, it's good that Bake Off really represented me the way that they did, otherwise I might not have as many fans. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you've got a big fan in Gabby who did the podcast, but Gabby's a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Day one, she's a big fan. Yeah, from day and look, one. I've also got um, Leah's dad. Oh, yeah, that's right. Know. Leah's dad's a, a big, big, big fan mm -hmm. too. So you've got, look, you're winning all the That'd important That'd be awkward, wouldn't it, if your dad was a big fan? <laughs> <laughs> you're winning over the important people. Indeed. You've got Australia covered from, from the women to the dads. Who needs the judges? No. Yeah. Oh, judges, smudges. Wait till we get to the little issue like of the swimsuit competition. <laughs> the mankini. <laughs> the I call this one the hidden possum. 
called this one the revealed dingo. Um, <laughs> so I call I, this one the rat caught in a chicken wire. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the Twitter um, comments just keep on coming about different ways to explain penises in Mankini. <laughs> uh, reach, out the, reach out to the puppetry of the penis boys, people, if you want some explanations of possible things you can do. Um, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help you out with a couple of renditions of the Harbour Bridge. They almost put me off Kentucky Fried Chicken when I went to see <laughs> I like almost. the fact. I like the fact that you did say almost. <laughs> Almost. Like, 11 herbs and spices are going to keep me away. No. I think the most scary thing... 11 herbs and spices. Have you seen the KFC Twitter? Yes. They follow 11 herbs and the Spice Girls. I know. I love that. <laughs> I love the fact they, they follow that. But what I'm disappointed with, by the way, mm. is they follow 11 people called Herb. They don't actually follow Dave Dobbins' backing band, The Herbs. <laughs> if only. If only. Mm. I was going to say, Chris... Something that I will miss. I mean, we only really had one week to go, so it's not going to be that much of it. And I can go back on Foxtel Go and watch the other episodes, but your beautiful way of just dryly delivering the, the dirtiest thing, like the dirtiest line you could have come up with about that bake to, you know, either a host or a judge when they've come up to talk to you about it. Like everything being stiff. Yep. Uh, just getting your fist in there. Yeah, innuendo weeks often begin with with you and or Barb. Uh, yeah, that's what we prided ourselves on was that um, being able to be the most inappropriate person up front, but without anyone really realising it. And it was beautiful. It was magnificent and true, true genius at work. So and thank I, you. And I think your interplay as well, you and Barb in particular, and your interplay with um, Mel and Claire was just a joy to behold. <laughs> That was that was amazing getting to interact with Mel and Claire. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I said on the on the recap podcast, and I mm. stand very firmly by this that I think they've now become the premier Bake Off hosts, you know, in all the versions. World. Um, our Mel and our Claire. Our Mel and our Claire. I think they've I think they've actually sort of now re now reached a point where they do it better than anyone else does it. By far. Uh, and I said I even doing I do even include what Mel and Sue were doing in the Bake Off. I think that they've, mm -hmm. they've sort of hit that sort of groove. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and 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 they again their one liners this year have just been first rate. And they've set you guys have given them given them beautiful feed lines and vice versa. Um, and look, to be honest, it only captures a tenth mm. of their full capacity of hilarity. Yeah, I think I think they set the host. The, the important part with Bake Off is the host set the tone, and I think they helped to set that sort of light tone in the in the shed that let you guys sort of flourish and and, and sort of be who you are. They held space yeah. really well. Yeah, hilarious, inappropriate space. <laughs> yes, <laughs> wonderfully inappropriate spaces. Well, I think their ability to deliver lines where people don't understand as well. Um, I think one of the best lines I've seen delivered was last night mm -hmm. when Dave uh, was measuring his cake to four and a half inches. Yes. <laughs> and Claire asked him if that was a significant number in his marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so and he didn't quite get it. Um, and then she had to backtrack and go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to explain now, I was making dirty. <laughs> Much like you're sleeping on my buns. <laughs> I made a dirty comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I guess now that you're out of the, the Bake Off shed, if you could go and, like, design a couple of weeks with some, like, nefarious bakes or some awesomely fun bakes, what would you be setting up for the next lot of contestants coming through? Oh, all the, the bake goodness. Um, all the things that aren't really bakes. <laughs> Waffles every week. Hot dogs. <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> nachos. Although we did work out that nachos technically can be a bake. Yeah. yeah well, loosely. If you put them in the oven to melt the cheese, but counting that as a bake. You could make it dog week, right? Because you could do corn dogs and then hot dogs 
and, and then, then a schnauzer. <laughs> um, no, wait, that's wrong, and that's probably animal cruelty. Um, Look, I don't think anyone should be doing any dogs. <laughs> it really is a crime. <laughs> it really is a crime. Don't do that. Don't do that, kids. Um, yeah, no, you, if you can design, you can design your own one week of Bake Off. Pick it. Um, nothing would be allowed to be smaller than four foot in height. Perfect. I especially like the idea you might have a four foot baker who's got to use a step ladder. <laughs> yes, that'd be fantastic. They get rid of the shed for the week and, and pull in this circus tent. <laughs> yes, there is no roof. There's no limits on this bake. That'd be that's what I do. The no limits bake. <laughs> nice. Oh, that'd be perfect. It's a beautiful counterpunch to the the uh, free bake. And it's a forty eight hour like fucking marathon. There's Not no allowed time, to leave. No time to bake. You just have to achieve these three bakes in forty eight hours. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like you need to feed a hundred people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it. Next year's finale. What are you going to make? What are you going to make? I'm going to make 10 metres worth of pizza. Go. Oh, <laughs> don't. Sounds too good. There's a challenge. A kilo burrito. <laughs> like the actual burrito, the tortilla has to weigh a kilo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then then you have to fill it up. <laughs> It's got these vats of beans and mints. The last part of the challenge is you have to be able to pick it up and eat it yourself. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the technical, so it's the first one finished. (laughs) And you win a mask. You win a mask that hides you from elimination. (laughs) Yes. And Claire's knitted it and it's either a Maggie Beer mask or a Matt Moran mask. And it's got a zipper where the mouth is. <laughs> and, it comes, and it comes with a baking crate. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. <laughs> well, I can safely say this is the most surreal conversation we've ever had on the podcast and I would not have it any other way. Um, thank you for doing this. We have had an absolute blast. I think we have been baking somewhere in there. Um, yeah, we said Maggie, Matt, Mel, Claire. We've mentioned the people in it. Although, hang on, what are we with Maggie, Matt, Mel, Claire? Um, you've still got something else you have to say, because you haven't said it yet. Belching. There you go. So, oh, oh my God, you're so inappropriate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's your moment, Chris. It's Let your, it shine. It, this, this one's for you, Chris. Belching. There you go. Oh. There you yeah. go. That just sent tingles down my spine. Yeah, I'm charging you five ninety five a minute for that one. <laughs> I just wish you said felching, but then had like a milkshake that was empty. <laughs> Slurped to the bottom. <laughs> it was like felching. <laughs> oh, was a... I love the little coffin choke at the end there, Chris. Perfect. A bit of ice cream. It was a bit of ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A likely story. A likely story. A bit chilly where you are tonight. <laughs> None of a <them> quality. <laughs> anyway, thanks for doing this, Chris. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having fun, me. Our finest moment. This is our finest moment in the history. I, I, I really hope that if anyone decides to ever submit us for the podcast awards, <laughs> this is the episode. This has to I be. I hope that this actually gets put to air. Ah, uh, it's, it's getting put to air because we don't have standards. Um, <laughs> a bar so low, it's melted in the core of the earth. <laughs> anyway. Oh, how could that be? Worst bait. <laughs> anyway, I'm still Chris. She's <laughs> laughing. That's also Chris. Uh, you'll probably hear from him again pretty soon. Uh, this is the Watching Up Podcast, and we'll catch you all later. Ciao. Cheers.